Hello there again guys, you join me, it's AJ here at Click Click Photography, you join me for another lens review. Uh, this time we're reviewing one of my absolute favourite lenses, I know I probably say that in every single one, uh, but this one was a keeper from the moment I bought it and that is the Nikon 10.5mm f2.8 fisheye. Okay, so what can I say about this lens from my experiences? Um, First of all, when I first put it on my camera, and everyone I think will have this experience when they first use it, it looks really weird um, because it has a view range of roughly 180 degrees. So you could be normal, obviously, you can only see just in front of you, so to speak, kind of like that. Whereas this, it's all the way around. So it is kind of weird, but you get used to it really quickly. Uh, it's incredibly small, it's really lightweight, it's about probably four inches and that's including the cap on the back. Um, what is interesting about on the back um, is because it is a fisheye, you obviously the glass is curved on the front. Um, so you can't use any filters. However, Nikon have got this really clever, funky design. I don't know if anyone else does this, I'm sure they do, but you can insert filters through the back. Um, there is a little sort of like I don't know it's like a USB sort of um, sorry SD card kind of slot thing uh, where you just pop it in through there. Um, I don't use any. I haven't got any. Um, there are some third-party ones I believe, but you can get them also from Nikon themselves. Um, but uh, all in all, very very good, and it's excellent in no light because it's 2.1. Um, so you can. It's really good for gigs. That's what I primarily why I got it for was. Um, as you probably know that I do quite a lot of gigs. Uh, gig photography and uh, live events and stuff with low lights so I wanted it to kind of so I could get a whole crowd sort of photo in or you know partially the band partially the crowd um, and it's very very good at that we'll have a look at some photos in a few minutes about it um, but also what's really amazing about it is um, the minimum focus distance on it is about three inches uh, less than that I think it's I think it's only about one or two inches so about three centimeters or something like that um, you have to be really careful when using it obviously like that I mean I haven't used it for macro stuff it's not really a macro lens or anything like that but you can when you are getting close to things you have to remember that everything in terms of this lens seems further away than what it is so whilst obviously looking through it and you're getting closer to whatever um, just remember the distance that you've actually got because from what you see through the viewfinder could look like you've got another foot or something like that and realistically you've got this much space so just be careful because you can't put like I say any filters on it so you won't have any UV protection or anything like that or any extra glass in the front just to be careful if you crack it um, but anyway um, let's go and have a look at some of the photos and example shots that I've done uh, with this lens Okay, here we are, we're looking at some of the gig shots then that I've done uh, with this lens, okay? So this first shot that you're seeing right now, uh, this was shot at a local festival not too far away from my home. Um, it's um, a very, very good lens, as you can see, for these wide angle shots. This was one of the reasons why I bought it, like I say. Um, I, the settings that I used on this were not uh, my usual settings by any shot at all. Uh, simple reason is that I still wanted to try and get as much light as possible to get people's faces lit up. Um, so the settings that I've got here were, uh, ISO 2000, um, very high for me, I normally only shoot 800 uh, or below. Um, the aperture was at 2.8 uh, to let in as much light as possible and the shutter was 1 60th of a second. Um, I had to be really careful with the shutter speed obviously because I didn't want any shake and from where I was actually sat, I was sat on one of the subs uh, for the sound and uh, let me say it was very very shaky when these guys were on. Um, and these, the crowd were bouncing. Um, if you ever catch these guys at a gig, it's called uh, they're called Ferocious Dog. Um, if you ever see them, you'll know what I mean when I, when I say a crowd bounces. Um, but yeah, um, you can see that pretty much the majority of the audience is there. The, the, the crowd does go all the way up to that kind of slither of light that you can see up on the top right, which is the bar area. Um, but yeah, it's very good for these sort of things, for capturing the band and their audience all in one go. 
and here we have another one uh, of the same band but this time taken uh, backstage above the little uh, back curtain sort of thing um, very good for getting these weird sort of angles I mean you'll see a lot of guys uh, for extreme sports using these things uh, particularly skateboarding and all that sort of stuff because they create these weird angles and uh, make things always look funky uh, very interesting very quirky um, and it's very good for doing these sort of things because um, it's such a light lens you can just literally poke the camera around the corner and you can virtually always guarantee that it's going to be you know the, you're going to be pretty safe with it uh, the only thing is obviously the focus um, but the settings that I used for this were my back to my normal gig settings really uh, f2.8 1 1 25th of a second for shutter speed and an ISO of 800 Okay, so now we're going on to landscapes now. Not many people would have thought that a fisheye would be good for landscapes owing to the fact that it, uh, straight lines kind of get curved and uh, kind of nothing, everything's just really distorted. Um, but as you can see from this photo, this was taken this morning up at a place called Hormond Hill, not too far away from uh, my house uh, in Shropshire. Um, and you can see the horizon line there in the distance it is still pretty relatively straight. Um, and then obviously this foreground sort of layer of the hill that obviously dips around you can see the curvature of the lens with that but what it's really good at is it's good at getting such a wide field of view and you can get obviously a lot of the sky in a lot of the foreground um, very very good for these sort of things um, it's a tip that I stole from one of my old bosses at a previous workplace I thought now fish high be crap for landscapes uh, but no very very good very impressed with it uh, in case you're wondering the settings for this were ISO 100 uh, this time F13 uh, um, and a shutter speed of 1 2 50th of a second Okay, now this photo, obviously it's been uh, over-edited, uh, crazy saturation on the colours. Um, uh, the simple reason I did that is because the water was actually brown. Nobody likes brown water, it looks vile. The original picture looks vile. Um, I might, I don't know, I might upload the picture as it was originally and show you the difference. Um, however, again, just as an example for landscapes, uh, you can see the horizon line there is relatively straight again. Very good at capturing uh, such a wide field view um, very very sharp um, as you can see on the building on the right there um, it's very very sharp um, the colors always come out kind of pretty good on it um, and again it's just that wide focal range um, the ultra wide of 180 degrees that it pretty much has it's fascinating and phenomenal how much detail and how much you can get in the photo um, seriously would recommend anybody trying a fisheye lens for landscapes really really good now on to probably one of my favorite things in the world to shoot is just random stuff on the street um, this photo that's on the screen right now for you was taken um, on a little trip that I took down to see my dad uh, down in Bath obviously you can see there the Abbey uh, right in front of you um, the simple reason I took this photo I liked those um, the kind of bike rack circle things and it following all the way down the path um, the bloke that was there looked at me a bit weird but you know oh well um, but yeah, it's a great for um, great lens for this style of photo. Um, simple reason being is you can get so much within the shot. I mean, someone could be just to the right of you, and you're taking a photo of them. They don't think that you are. They don't. They don't even realise that they're in shot. Um, I mean, because the, that 180 degree again, it's just brilliant for it. Um, very very sharp though um, considering it is distorted um, I mean if we were to crop this down all the way to the windows just pretty much behind the gentleman that's there um, it's ridiculously sharp um, and you just wouldn't expect it with it being so distorted um, but with again with that 180 you can still get all the sky you can get all of that abbey in and believe me that abbey is damn tall um, and obviously you can still get a lot of this foreground uh, excellent, excellent lens for street photography. Love it. Another couple of quick examples of uh, some of the street photography that I've done with it. Uh, this photo here was taken at Shrewsbury Indoor Market. Um, I love the contrast in this photo of the kind of the young guys there working in the, the restaurant cafe thing. Um, and then this gentleman there in his kind of suit and his hat. Um, it's just that was taken from the hip nobody knew that I took the photo as you can tell in the expressions um, 
and it's just because it's such a small little lens it's fantastic for doing that uh, I've got another example here to show you let's where's that one gone yeah, we've got this one here again same market and it was uh, just another one shot from the hip very quickly um, incredibly dark around the the outsides and all that sort of stuff but this light comes out through the actual marketplace uh, one more to show you regarding this uh, the fish eye for the streets um, just taken outside of that marketplace uh, in a very very narrow alleyway um, but you can see how you know these buildings kind of swarm around you so to speak very tall and because of the distortion on the, the lens they're kind of folding in on themselves uh, very very good for that and creating big uh, small spaces looking to make them look huge uh, we'll come on to the interiors uh, interior shots now okay like I say here we are with an, uh, an interior shot this one was taken uh, inside a church in Shrewsbury it's called uh, St Mary's um, something I'd always say ask people you know or you know say to people to do a little tip if you are going to be taking any photos of anything uh, religious or religious buildings or anything like that um, always try and ask someone's permission and please uh, do leave a donation that's exactly what I did with this one um, but anyway on to the photos um, so yeah this one it's it, the fish eye it's great I mean this church is not small by any means but it's also not you know a cathedral it's not enormous um, but with this lens I mean it makes the arches look huge makes the, the the far end arch in the distance there look ginormous and it makes the ceiling look just miles away and just a, a massive um, fantastic for doing interior shots it is a I suppose a um, real estate um, estate agent sort of dream lens anything ultra wide wide angle um, and you can't go wrong with it um, so it has so many different uses okay then guys thanks very much for watching my uh, Nikon 10.5 millimeter f2.8 fisheye review um, I think we are going to be doing the next review to do would be the Nikon 70 to 200 2.8 uh, really really super impressed with that lens um, you know it is the the mutts nuts so to speak <laughs> um, and I uh, look forward to doing that. I've got some excellent, excellent example shots to show you um, from weddings to gigs to landscapes to birds to nature to all sorts of stuff. Uh, so we'll be doing that and then we'll be doing a tripod review. There's all sorts of stuff coming up. So please do hit subscribe down at the bottom there. Please do give us a like, whichever way around it is. Um, and then please also like the Facebook page. There'll be links in the description. And also head over to Flickr, give us a like and just tell your friends. So thank you very much again for watching uh, and have a good day it is um, a, a a very good um, uh, do you know what I can't f***ing speak now I'm having to record this for the second time because the f***ing microphone wasn't on for the first time mm. right. recorded like probably five minutes worth of stuff waffling chatting bloody mic wasn't on so it's gonna sound crap F now.